College Street in Henderson, North Carolina. For those who are joining us through live streaming, Facebook, YouTube, anywhere, uh, the W World, World Wide Web, uh, God's richest blessings be upon you. And for those joining us in the sanctuary, God's richest blessings be upon you as well. Let us share a few housekeeping matters and then we'll move right into the purpose of why we've gathered here today. Uh, this coming Tuesday um, at 7 o'clock p.m., uh, we will share our Sunday School lesson online. Everybody's invited to join in with us uh, in our Sunday School lesson that we have at online. We also, on Thursday at 12 o'clock noon, we will have our noonday prayer. The United Shiloh Missionary Baptist Association Fellowship Day will be held Saturday, September the 14th at 12 o'clock noon to 5 o'clock p.m at Bullocksville Community Center in Manson, North Carolina. Our annual session of the United Shiloh <coughs> Missionary Baptist Association, it will convene Tuesday through Thursday, September the 17th through September the 19th at 7 o'clock p.m. at Mitchell Baptist Church. For those who are interested can join the session virtually as well. Uh, this information will be posted soon. All right, free prostate screening for men. 15 minutes could save your life. The screening will take place at Mariah Crown Health on Thursday, September the 19th uh, from 5 o'clock to 7 o'clock p.m. 
All right, this morning, we also want to uh, keep lifted in prayer this morning. Sister Bernadine Williams, Sister Camilla Hunter, Sister Patricia mm -hmm. Cash, the Reverend Mary Anderson, the Deacon Michael Anderson, Mother Freddie LeMay, Reverend Cora McDowell, Sister Betty W. Howard, Deaconess Linda Cruz, Sister Brenda Gant, Sister Margaret Malone, Sister Charlene Sellers Clay, Sister Annette Miller, Sister Sheila Sil Sister Sheila Izzard Simmons, uh, Sister Sandra Hicks, Sister Elsie Sellers, Brother Walter Durham Jr., Sister Esther Hanks, Brother Ronnie Smith, Brother David Carroll Jr., Sister Bernadine Yancey, Sister Hilda Taylor, Sister Toria Parker, Dr. Dana Baker, Sister S. Donetta Evans, Dr. Lawrence Johnson, and Elder Robert Bailey. In sympathy, we want to keep in prayer the following persons in their recent loss. The Reverend Mary Anderson, the Sister, Sister Betty Howard, Reverend Shelton Anderson, Sister Dominique Anderson, Sister Danielle Anderson, Brother Tito Howard, Sister Charlene Howard, Sister Labasha Williams, uh, Sister Betty D. Howard, Sister Shaquilla Howard, Sister Shadeja Howard, Sister Amelia Silver, Sister Veronica Howard, Brother Devante Howard, Brother Jamarius Whitley, their cousin, Miss Johnny R. Johnny Ray Gill, Deacon Michael Anderson, Sister Tamla Anderson, their cousin-in-law, Mr. Johnny Ray Gill. May each of you know that earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. And this morning, we also want to keep lifted our dance ministry who has gone out to minister this morning doing service. We want to keep them in prayer. And um, as they all went out to dance ministry, uh, Sister Anderson asked me, she says, what you gonna do? I said, the Lord gonna send somebody. Uh, so, you know, I, I looked around this morning and just waited. I knew that the Lord would send somebody. So he sent us a technician this morning. Uh, so we want to thank Sister Glover this morning for walking in right on time. We just give her all praise on this morning. All right, let us bow for a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you, God. We just want to say thank you for one more day, God. We just want to say thank you for allowing us to open our eyes, to be able to see one more time, to be able to walk into this place called Shiloh, God, and for those online being able to have some type of technology, God, to tune into this place, God, where you are here on this morning, and we give your name, the praise, God, for showing up for us, God. So, God, we just ask that while you're here, that you'll keep on doing what you do the best, God, that you'll bless each and every person that's in this place, God, that you will touch each and every one of us, God, whatever it is that we might be going through, God, I have no idea, but God, you are all-knowing, God, so I am putting all things in your hands this morning, God, whether it be job, whether it be family, whether it be health, God, God, there's so many names that are on our sick and our shut-in list, God. We ask that you would touch each and every one, that you would stop by the rest homes, that you would stop by the hospital, God, that you would stop in each and every person's location, God, that you would touch each and every one. God, I'm so glad that you don't have to go from place to place because we know that you are everywhere all at the same time, God. And so, God, we just ask that you would bless each and every name that was called this morning, God, those who may be going into surgery, God, those who may face some type of illness, God, those who are looking for jobs, God, God, those who are having problems on their job, problems in their family, whatever it is, God, we just give it to you on this morning. And God, while we're giving it to you, we just want to go ahead and say thank you, God. God, we want to give you praise in advance, God. God, we don't know what it's going to look like yet, but we know who we're giving it to, God. And we know that you are able to work these things out, God, that we're putting in your hands, God. God, for those folks who are just so blessed, God, that they're not going through anything, God, we thank you for it, God, that they're not going through anything right now. But God, we just ask that you would just keep their hearts and their minds, God, while they're not going through, God, that they might be praying for somebody else, God. God, and whatever it is that they may go through, God, that they are preparing for the test that you're going to put in front of them, God. So, God, we just thank you and we praise you. God, for all that you've already done, all that you're doing right now, God. God, we just ask that you will bless our pastor, God, that you will touch him from the crown of his head down to the sole of his feet, God. God, that you will renew him. God, that you will just bless him wherever he is, God. We just thank you, God, for what you've already done. We ask a special blessing 
by each and every usher, each and every member, each and every parishioner, everybody that's under the sound of my voice, that you will touch each and every one. And God will forever give your name to praise. We pray this, God, in the precious and the holy name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. Our scripture this morning, very familiar passage of scripture, comes from the book of Psalms. And from the book of Psalms, I'll be reading from the 34th chapter, verses 1 through 8. Psalm 34, verses 1 through 8. And I'll be reading from the King James Version. And you all might know it. It sounds like this. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me and delivered me from all fears. They looked unto me and were lighted, and their faces were not ashamed. The poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamped round about them that fear him and delivered him. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Bless this man that trusted in him. May the hearers of God's word be blessed. Amen.
indeed some this morning who came in since we got started. So, so we'll let you stand this morning and wave and smile and give somebody the prettiest smile that you have. Don't take for granted that you have somebody to smile at you and that you have the opportunity to smile. Amen. I just want you all to know that in 1936, Margaret Mitchell wrote a book called Gone with the Wind. Many of you all may know it, um, but the book called her so much torment that she never wrote a part two to the book. She died, I think, some 13 years later, so she had time to do it, but it just, due to trouble, she did not write it. In 1991, Alexandria Ripley wrote Scarlet, which is part two to that book, because everybody wanted to know what happened to Red and Scarlet and Ashley in the movie. So I want you all to know that this morning I am doing something that might not be done all that often, but uh, has been done before. Last week, Reverend preached God is our help. And he came from Psalm 27. He talked about the Lord is my light and my salvation. So this morning I'm going to talk about God is our help part two. I didn't do part one, but I'm going to come with part two. Uh, God is our help. Talking about I will bless the Lord at all times. Somebody ought to be able to bless the Lord with me this morning. Blessing the Lord at all times. Y'all know what? It's mighty easy to bless the Lord when things are going well. Uh, things are going good. It's real easy to give God's name the praise uh, when things are going your way. Uh, in, in, in this book of Psalm 34, maybe everything is going David's way. Uh, uh, maybe that's why he's able to bless the Lord at all times. But then again, maybe not. Maybe David is trying to tell us something. He, he's trying to tell us uh, that there are at least three times when it's always okay to praise the Lord. It's okay to praise the Lord when you are not in a storm. That means when things are going your way, you ought to be able to give God some praise right. that you're not going through something, yeah. that you don't have death in your family, that you don't have sickness in your body. It ought to be okay to give God some praise. Yeah. Secondly, God, uh, David wants us to know that it's okay to give God praise when you're in a storm or when you're going through a storm. Yeah. You ought to still be giving God some praise. Oh, yeah. Lastly, he wants you all to know that it's okay to give God some praise when you are coming out of a storm. I, I just want you all to know this morning, just in case you hadn't figured it out, that you had one of those three points. You either not in a storm, you're going through a storm, or you coming out of a storm. So David is letting you know that you ought to be giving God some praise, not only this morning when you get back home. When you're driving in your car by yourself, you ought to still be able to give God some praise. Look at what David is going through in Psalms 34. What made David write Psalms 34? If we look at it, it goes back to 1 Samuel, the 21st chapter. Uh, in Samuel, uh, if I could just give you all a little bit of history about the book of Samuel. In the book of Samuel, the first king comes to the Israelites. Uh, they choose this tall, good-looking man by the name of Saul as their king. They, they pick him because he's tall taller than everybody, and he's looking good. I just want you all to know, young ladies, if you're looking for somebody, your criteria needs to be a little bit more that he's tall and he's good looking. Uh, because that, that, that is just not enough. If he's tall, good looking, and got a bad heart, you're going to be in for some heartache. If something is wrong on the inside of that tall, good looking man, you're going to have some problems somewhere down the line. You need a little bit more, but that's why they picked Saul, because Saul was tall and good looking. Saul just like uh, all the priests of the day. Saul just like all the prophets of the day. He was anointed for the job. Just want you all to know, we New Testament folks now, anointing now looks a little bit different than it looked back then. Back then, they anointed them with oil. The kings, the priests, and the prophets were anointed. But now since Jesus has come, everybody here can get God's anointing. All of us, have you ever, uh, let, let me just give you my definition of what anointing is. Anointing is something 
that you don't have to tell anybody about, right. but they'll know it anyway. Yeah. It's something that makes a difference. Matter of fact, we always think that the, the, the anointing is on this end of the church. But the first anointing that you ought to see when you get, you ever been to church and seen a usher smile so pretty, it just made you feel better? There is an anointing on the face of the usher that can just bless you. Everywhere in the church, God's anointing could fall. But, but, but here it is in 1 Samuel, Saul was anointed. Now, just because a person is anointed, doesn't mean that they do everything with their anointing that God wants them to do. Matter, matter of fact, uh, let, let's bring it up a little bit further. I, I want to tell you all about maybe somebody that you all might know that's anointed. I remember when I was a little boy, we were traveling, we were going somewhere, and my dad was listening to this tape of Al Green. It was probably his old rugged cross uh, tape, and I got tired of listening to Al Green because I had listened to Al Green so much. I was like, Dad, can we listen to something else? I just want you all to know that Al Green is anointed. I, I'm going to tell you how I know that he is anointed because we can listen to him sing old rugged cross on this morning, and somebody might clap or wave your hands to Al Green singing the old rugged cross. But just as soon as he finished, he can say love is something that make you want to do wrong, make you do right. I, I just want you all to know when that guitar starts to play, I don't care how holy you were just a second ago, that your foot going to start tapping, you're going to feel the anointing of love and happiness. But I just want you all to know that Al Green lied. Because love does not make you want to do wrong. It might make you want to do right, but love does not make you want to do wrong. If I can tell you in song form what love looks like, love looks like this. It says, living, he loved me. Dying, he saved me. Buried, he carried my sins far away. Rising, he justified. Freed me forever. One day he's coming back, oh glorious day. Uh, that's what love looks like. Uh, but, 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 but because he gives out anointing, I just want you to know that if you don't walk in the anointing, the same anointing that he gives can also be taken away. Yeah. Here, here, this Saul who was anointed for the job decided just because he was good looking and tall, he could do everything the way he wanted. And that same anointing that God gave him, God took it away. Uh -huh. The next man is now anointed for the job. Somebody by the name of David. I just want you all to know that just because you're anointed don't mean that all your days are going to be easy. Just because you get anointed doesn't mean that everything is going to work out for you. Because I just want you to know when God blesses you, there are going to be some jealous folks. There are going to be some haters. There are going to be some folks that just don't like you simply because you got a pretty smile on your face. There are going to be some folks that just don't like you because you can go through all types of turmoil and still walk around and just be as excited as you were as if nothing would happen. That's God's anointing. And everybody can't take you having God's anointing, especially when they don't have it. This Saul who was given God's anointing, God took it away. Saul became tormented. And David had to come in and play the harp for him to get some of those evil spirits off of Saul. David, who's anointed. Saul, who used to be anointed, has now got to the point where he hates David with every fiber of his being. Has tried on several occasions to kill David. Now here is David at a point in his life where Saul is trying to kill him and he has to run. He has to run for his life because he is scared. Here is somebody who's anointed, running for their life. What's wrong with this picture? Somebody who has God's blessing still has to run for their life, but that's what's happening to David. Psalm 34, he's running for his life. As a matter of fact, he gets to the temple, and once he gets to the temple, you would think everything's all right in Shiloh. You get to Shiloh, and everything is good. He gets there, and he's hungry because he took off running. He didn't bring no bread with him. He didn't bring anything to eat. Uh, but when he gets there, he's hungry, and he asks the priest, he asks Elimelech, he says, you got some bread. And he does get some bread. And while he thinks he's in his safety, 
Here comes one of the chief herdsmen of Saul, also in the temple. And he sees David, and David realizes that I am not safe here either. He says, uh, y'all got any guns, any weapons here in the church? And the priest said, this is not the NRA. Uh, we don't have any of that stuff in here. But there is that sword that you used to kill Goliath with. We didn't keep it wrapped up in the back. You can go ahead and get that. Because David is putting more trust in stuff than he is putting in God. Does, does it sound like anybody uh, oftentimes in our life? We'll put more trust in our education. We'll put more trust in our bank account. We'll put more trust in our family than we will in God until we realize that that stuff won't get us anywhere, that we have to turn around and go right back to the person who told us to come to him in the first place. That's where David is. He's now realizing that he has to run again. And he runs down to Gath. And King Achish is there. And King Achish hears that David is there. Now, I, I know that you all know something about David. You all know about David and Goliath, uh, that big giant man that he killed. But now Gabe, David has run to Gath. Do you all know that Gath is David's hometown? Uh, do you all know what it's like to be big and bad when you got all your boys with you? But now David is by himself. David now all of a sudden, because he is by himself, has to act crazy. David has to act like a fool. David yeah. has to let his spit come down his beard wow. because uh, he is scared for his life. He is now in between a rock and a hard place. But yet and still, this man who is in between a rock and a hard place, I can tell you, he's in the midst of a storm and still saying that I will bless the Lord at all times. Right. His praise shall continuously be in my, what are you going through in your life? There's, somebody, there's worse than somebody trying to kill you on both sides that you can't lift up your voice and give God's name some praise. Amen. David is saying that I will bless the Lord at all times. His, his praise shall continuously be in my mouth. He says, my soul shall make her boast in the yeah. Lord. The humble will hear thereof and be glad. David wants you all to know that there is something deep down on the inside of me uh, that makes me praise God. I'm not doing this for show. As a matter of fact, you don't even have to be around me. David is saying that he loves God so much well. that something on the inside of him is always telling him to to give God's name some praise. Yeah. It says that the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. I, I just yeah. want you all to know that while we are here, hopefully everybody here is saints of God. Every, everybody here is some believers of God. But there are some folks out there who don't believe in God. There are some folks out there who don't know about God. And when you give God praise, it's not the preacher's job to do it all. I know that y'all want to put everything on the preacher, but there are some responsibility that belongs to you as yeah. believers. Yeah. That you ought to be able to give God's name some praise right. so that somebody else can hear that God is good. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's one thing to do it in here. It's, it's good to do it in here. But we ought to be able to practice in here so that when we get out there, things won't be so hard. Right. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I, I just want you to know that God is so good that I don't want to praise him all by myself. You ought not want to praise him by he is so good that it is something we ought to be able to do together. I, I went to um, a Hornets basketball game. They were playing the New York Knicks and when they were playing the New York Knicks, I want y'all to know them some of the worst fans in the world. They talked junk the whole game. I had to go to the bathroom, and when I went to the bathroom, guy came out the stall with a beer in his hand, talking junk, uh, even in the back. Every, everywhere, they were talking junk the whole entire, oh, but they were cheering for their team because the New York Knicks were up the whole game. But then when it got down to the very end of the game, uh, the tables turned. The Hornets came back and won. Those same fans who were rude and talking all the junk beforehand, all of a sudden they decided to shut up. They didn't want to say anything anymore. But if you can cheer for the Knicks, if you can cheer for the Hornets, if you can cheer for whoever, why can you not cheer for the person who woke you up this morning? Why can you not cheer for the one who started you on your way? When you had pain in your body, he allowed you to go on anyway. Here is, I, I want to give you all the reason. Because you're always waiting for God to bring you out of something. 
when you didn't have a good sense to realize he kept you in the midst of it. While you are going through, he is still keeping you. Right. He is giving you strength to carry on while you are going through whatever it is that you're going through. God has been this good to each and every one of us. So we ought to be able to come together and give God's name some magnification. I sought the Lord. He heard me and delivered me from all of my fears. Uh, God ever delivered you from anything in your life? God, God ever kept you through anything in your life? Uh, my mom went to the hospital the other day and Dominique took my mom to the hospital. And so uh, because my mama had to stay so late, what I decided to do is we went up and we, uh, Tamlin went with us and we switched it out. I stayed late and allowed Dominique to come back. But while we were walking out of the hospital, she told me that that man came and a man was in the car wreck. And she said, I thought the man was dead because the man had never moved. And she said, but then I realized that they had the man strapped down. And I told Dominique, I said, Dominic, I still remember when I was a little bitty boy we were in a head-on collision. We got hit by a drunk driver. My face was cut up. My, my, my white shirt that I had on was filled with blood. And an ambulance never came and got us. Some good Samaritan who was driving by took us to the hospital. And even though I was a little bitty boy, I told her I still remember walking into the emergency room. Everybody looking at us like we were dead. Everybody looking at us like we weren't even supposed to be walking in that place. But I just want you to know that God is a keeper. There are things that I have been through in my life. I don't need you to testify for me because I done been through enough stuff to tell it on my own that God has been good. Matter of fact, I can look around the room. If you don't want to tell it, let me tell you for you. God has been good to you. God has kept you through some stuff that you ought to be able to give his name to break. Verse 5 said that they looked unto him and were lighter, and their faces were not ashamed. We ought to know that Jesus is the best thing that there is. We, we ought not get wary when we get around folks to call on God's name. But, but some folks get so ashamed that they don't want to call his name in front of everybody. As a matter, matter of fact, let, let me give you an example. Um, you all's last president. <laughs> when he got elected, I guess they wanted to better know who he was. So they were having a conversation with him, and he had a book called The Art of the Deal. And the Bible came up. He said that the Bible is his favorite book. He said that the art of the deal is his second favorite book. So since the Bible is his favorite book, they said, if it's your favorite book, why don't you just tell us a Bible verse? He thought about it for a second, and he says, no, because it's personal. <laughs> well, they went a little bit further since they were talking about the Bible. They says, well, what's your favorite testament? The new or the old? He thought about it for a second. He says, uh, I like both of them the same. Uh, but he didn't want to say anything about the Bible that is his favorite book. If the Bible is your favorite book, well, yeah. you ought to be able to tell somebody at some point in time that Philippians 4.13 says that I can do all things through Christ. If the Bible is your favorite book, you ought to be able to tell somebody in Psalms 23, it says that the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. If the Bible is your favorite book, you ought to know that John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten. If the Bible is your favorite book, you ought to be able to tell somebody that Proverbs 3 and 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. If the Bible is your favorite book, you ought to know that really popular verse that 
comes from Jeremiah 29 and 11 that says, For I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans of good and not of evil. If the Bible is your favorite book. Yeah. We ought to know that Romans 8 and 28 says that we know all things work together for the good of them that love God and who are called according to his purpose. But maybe the Bible is not really his favorite book. Because if the Bible is your favorite book, there ought to be some sign that you can see sometimes. You ought not even have to tell me. If the Bible is your favorite book, I'll just know it. You don't even have to tell me about it. But maybe the Bible is not his favorite book. Verse 6 says, the poor man cried out, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his trouble. When I first read that, I guess I thought that they were talking about somebody homeless. I guess I thought that they were talking about somebody on the street. But I want you all to know that we were all poor and wretched souls. We are all somebody who needed God to bless us, to love us, to lift us up, to help us out of situations that we have been through. Help our corrupt thinking. Help us to go, go on the right path. We were all that poor man. We are all somebody who needed God's help. But God cried. He heard our cry. He found us. He helped us through whatever it is. The angel of the Lord kept round about them that fear uh, him and delivered them. God ever, you, you ever been on a job and somebody lied on you? You, you, you ever been on a job and, and, and somebody didn't treat you right? Um, I, I remember... I won't tell y'all how much of a heathen I was. I ain't going to tell y'all the whole story. Uh, but, but, but I remember when, one day I was at work and uh, I had gone over to a school and I talked to the receptionist at the school, didn't put my hands on nothing. Uh, but I left, the receptionist was just moving some things around. And the principal called back and talked to my boss and said, why did Sheldon come over here and tear my school up? Why did Sheldon come over here and take all of these things apart? And I thought some thoughts and I said a few words uh, that I ain't gonna repeat all of them that I thought I said this morning. Uh, but I was going down to the superintendent's office. I wasn't gonna ask, I was gonna go down there and kick the door open and say, don't believe nothing that person says uh, anymore. Uh, but somebody prayed for me. Yeah. Yeah. Even at work, somebody was yeah. praying because that spirit that came upon me that was not the right spirit. Somebody prayed that spirit off of me. I just want you all to know that there have been things that have come against me. There have been some things that come against you. But I just want you to know that just because you're here this morning, God has kept you through some stuff. There have been folks who have lied on you, scandalized your name. But God loves you so much that he won't let all of that stuff overtake you. Then, then we, we get down yeah. to my favorite verse. It says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusts in him. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Um, I've done a lot of singing in my day, and I was singing with a, a, a group. And we had gone somewhere to sing, and because I had a van, we were, uh, I was driving the van, and uh, one of the guys that was in the group, we had to stop by his aunt's house because his aunt was cooking some food. And I says, okay, uh, we're going to stop by here, we'll let you go get something to eat, and he came out with about five plates all just for him, um, you know, but, but, but we, we were offered, you know, we wanted, I, you know, I, I turned it down. But he was eating and smacking while I was driving, like, like this was the best thing. And he kept offering. He said, man, have some, have some. I said, no, I'm good. I'm, I'm good. And he kept on offering. He says, have some, have some. And I, I looked over, and he had one plate full of dessert. And so I had turned down everything as many times as I could. But then I looked over, and I saw this piece of chocolate pie. And I said, okay. I said, right, I'll, I'll take the chocolate pie. And I want you all to know that when I had this chocolate pie, I, I had chocolate pie before, and, and, and I've had good chocolate pie before, and, and the pie was not that, that it was any better than any chocolate pie that I ever had before, but whomever cooked this chocolate pie was so good that they cooked the meringue in such a way that, that they made it so hard that the meringue was like candy. Uh, it, it was unlike meringue. 
I can ground meringue. I, I, I got skills. I, I can do that. I, I know how to put it in there and turn it so it won't burn and get too black on one side. I, I know how to do those things. But you put something in it that the meringue tastes like candy. So every time I see the lady from here on out, I would always ask her, I said, you done cooked any chocolate pies lately? Uh, and, and so it, and it got so bad that when she see me, that even before I could even speak to her, she'll come to me and say, I don't have any chocolate pie. But, but, but I just want you all to know that I had the taste for myself. There is nothing that he could have said that would have made me experience what that chocolate pie was. I had to take, God is so good. I can tell you night and day that God is good. But at some point in time, you have to try him for yourself. You have to go through some stuff sometimes in your life so that you can really be able to tell somebody how good God is. But if everybody doesn't know that God is good, everybody doesn't know that God is a keeper, everybody doesn't know that God can help you out through some situations, they still think they got to figure everything out on their own. So you got to try him for yourself. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. You can do it all on your own if you want to. It's all up to you. But I just want you to know uh, this is not going to be good on your health. Your blood pressure going to be up. Uh, your All of them numbers that, that are supposed to be in line going to be out of line because God is the one who is able. And while you are trying to figure it out, there are some times that God just steps back and says, okay, if you think you got it, if you think you're big enough, if you think you're bad enough, go ahead and figure it out on your own. And then you'll soon realize that you're not big enough. Right. Yeah. You're going to soon realize that yeah. you should put your trust in the one who created the heavens and the earth. You ought to put your trust in the one who came from heaven to earth. You ought to put your trust in the one who lived for some 33 years. You ought to put your trust in the man who died one Friday. They hung him on an old rugged cross because he loved you so much. While he was on the cross, they talked about him. They said, if you be God, come down and save me. He, he loved you so much. He stayed right there. Yeah. 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 Had it been me, I don't love y'all that much. I'd have come down. Had it been you, y'all don't love us so much. that you. But he stayed right there on that old rugged cross till his head hung in the locks of his shoulder and he died. I am told that they put him in an old bar or two. I am told that on Saturday he went down to hell and he preached a revival. And he says, anybody going with me, I'm coming up out of here. But early on Sunday morning, that one who died on Friday, he got up just for you and for me with all power in his hand. Amen. God is our help. Amen. <laughs> The blood that Jesus shed for me.
just want to give your name the praise. We want to thank you, God, for going to the old rugged cross for each of us, for every one of us, God, for loving us so much, for dying for us, God. But yet you didn't stay dead. You got us with all power in your hands. So God, now we just ask that you would bless each and every person, every hearer, God, of your word, God, that it will make a difference in our lives. So that when it makes a difference in our lives, God, that we can in turn make a difference in somebody else's. God, we give your name and praise and we thank you. Amen. Amen. This morning, as we come to the Lord's table, we don't come to the Lord's table simply because we work. We come to the Lord's table because he invites us. We come to remember what Jesus did for us. What he did for us, we couldn't do for ourselves. Now, if you don't eat, you don't have part of it. But if you eat, and you are not right in your soul, where it says you can eat damnation to your own soul. But we can pray, and we can ask God to forgive us of all of our sins, and ask him to help us to make sure that our heart is right. So now, God, we just ask that you would bless God. these elements, that you would change them from the natural to the spiritual. We eat, God, and we drink in remembrance of what you did for us. But God, we don't just come just to come, God. We come because you invited us. But God, we want to be right. We want to be in the right place. We ask that you would touch our hearts, that you would touch our minds, God. Help us to be on the right path. Help us to have the right thing. But God, for those things that we have already done that have not been pleasing to you, God, please forgive us. Help us to be right. Help us to be whole. Help us to be one with you, God. And we will forever give your name the praise. Amen. Amen. If you take this is my body, which is broken for you. This is my body, which is given on behalf of you. Take and eat it. He says, this is my blood, which was shed for you. For without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Take it, drink of it. And when they had finished, they went out into the Mount of Olives. We don't have a Mount of Olives, but we do have places that we can go. And we can tell God, tell people of God's goodness. Let us go and do ye likewise. Amen. Amen. Amen.